Hello and welcome to season three of ZetaCraft. And <laughs> it is Yay. quite a different season we have planned here today. So if you look at the world around us, we are actually doing a floating islands world for the season. So we have an entire world where there's no bedrock layer, there's void everywhere, and it's going to be an absolute blast to do something very different for us, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. We've got some new Zetas here to join us for the new season, and as we all know, once you're a Zeta, you're a Zeta forever, so they are now officially Zeta members. Congratulations. <laughs> and, uh, oh, God. Oh, God. I'm not doing that. Ah, Jesus. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Running away. Running what away. just happened? Everybody's going for the crits. <laughs> I mean, oh, I've already got Mega's head, so I'm oh, good. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Back to spawn. Back to spawn. Oh, my go. Goodness, you guys are oh. so violent. Oh, oh <laughs> there I go. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got we'll it. Have it I'm not there it goes. <laughs> yes. I got you. Oh, oh no. I'm gonna oh. win this. Love that. No, 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 no. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna no, wait no, no, I feel like That's I'm it. being targeted. <laughs> For those who are not afraid of us, someone said something about a battle royale. Well, 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 we're back again with another ZetaCraft episode in a brand new season, and as you can see, I'm over here at the end. Uh, where Cable and Ice beat the dragon a couple days ago, and I am going to go try to get an Elytra. I'll fill you in with what's happened up to this point, but I figured it would be kind of fun to do an intro from the end. So anyways, I'm going to go end raiding, and while I do that, enjoy these clips of everything that I've accomplished up to this point. Back to the old grind of mining some trees. You know, we got to make some tools. Uh, Ricky's over here dying to slimes, not sure what's going on there, but have to mine some iron. Uh, then we had to go find our home island. At this point, uh, Ricky is still dying to slimes. After that, I decided to go raid an ancient city. Then Bleaker decided to chop down all the trees, where Ricky was still dying from slimes. So then I decided to go mine some leaves and Bleeker decided to build a few farms and Ricky's still dying from slimes. Then we dug a huge hole and found another fortress and then Ricky was over there dying from slimes. After that decided to build a mob XP farm which barely worked at all. Uh, yeah there was probably some dark areas that needed to be lit up. So we went ahead and lit all of the islands underneath us up and Ricky is still dying to slimes as usual. After that I went and found the stronghold and headed right in to the end. Oh and last but not least, Ricky died to slimes. Well let's talk a little bit about the world that we're living in this season on ZetaCraft because as you can see it is shattered. Uh, it's all void. There's no bedrock layers. Uh, the nether is the same way, and I'll probably show you a quick replay of that as well. Um, but it's definitely a little bit more difficult to maneuver around and get going. Just as an example, the simplest of tasks, like going to get a certain type of resource, let's say sand, can take hours. Because you got a bridge all over the place, and as you can see behind me, like there's just like a one wide bridge over there. Uh, Spawn has thankfully been uh, transformed due to Mindless, and you can see he's got like some nicer bridges around. Uh, there's another one over there behind me. So he definitely doesn't like the uh, one wide dirt bridges that a lot of people are using. So we may do something with that in the future. I have yet to decide. But anyways, let's go ahead and head over to my area where we're going to talk a little bit more about the starter base that I plan to build. Um, and Bleeker... I don't know if I've talked about this yet. Bleaker lives with me and he's basically like doing anything and everything to help out so he can earn his keep and he's super helpful. So we may run into him while we're over there, but let's go ahead and head over to my base area. Our base area. He gets mad at me when I call it my base. It's our base. 
All right, let's talk about this base area because right now it looks like a huge mess. Lots of farms because Bleaker's hanging out over here and you know he likes to farm things if you watched any of his Zetacraft Season 2 content. So uh, yeah, a lot of the land is currently dedicated to farming. Um, we needed some red and black wool for the starter build. So you can see that that's what those sheep over there are doing. And then you could probably see, I haven't edited the replay footage yet, but underneath us is the mob farm. But we built a mob farm that doubles as an XP farm. And basically the sides alternate so that there's always mobs dropping. And it took us about five hours to light up this entire area. Every single island that is around us is lit up so that no mobs will spawn uh, around this area because when I turned on the mob farm after we built it, we were getting like one mob like every 10 minutes and it was terrible. So every single thing is lit up. All of the caves and everything within this area are lit up except for right here apparently. Oh, well, cause that's not in the spawning circle when I'm in the mob or when I'm in the farm. So let's talk about what's next because the next thing is a starter base. I'm tired of the chest monster that's growing over here. So I have gathered all of the materials and everything to be able to build the starter base. We're gonna put it back here in the back corner of the island because I have some grand plans for this giant floating island. Um, so you can see there's gonna be kind of two pieces, right? There's a big one here and one here. Uh, and then when we build it, which we'll go into a replay to do here in a second, after we build it, we'll talk a little bit about the design choice and what I decided to go with as the starter base. So anyways, let's hop right into that time lapse and we'll get building. Well, we completed the starter base, and as you can see, it is a war tent. Um, I tried to do my best to design it. I did use a lot of banners in the original design, but it made it real laggy. Um, and we did take a little bit of inspiration from Scar's tent at Mumbo's base in Hermitcraft Season 6, I think it was. Um, I, I really loved the design that he used, so I did replicate a little bit of that, but then I made the tent a lot bigger because this is going to be my starter home. So... Anyways, if we go inside, you can see we got some smelting up here in the front. We got some storage on the sides, and then I got my little bedroom with maybe my valuables and stuff here on the back wall with some places to put some things. Uh, anything that I want to save, obviously I can kind of hang up, and I can always add more as well. But yeah, that's the starter base. Uh, the only other thing is up here we have some bulk storage, so anything that is too much to fit in like a single double chest I'll probably keep up here. Um, and then also, if you were watching the time lapse, I also built a smaller tent out back for Bleaker so that he could have his own little starter home. And his is a little bit smaller, kind of positioned behind mine, but he's got his own little chests and uh, things to store as well as his own bed. And I even dropped him an ender chest. So this is where we're going to live for the time being. Like I said, we have a lot of grand plans around this island. Um, but I think the next thing that I'm going to focus on is 
organizing all of my chests and getting all of my materials and things moved over here uh, instead of way over here. There's some chests there, there, and over here in a pile. So I think I'm going to move everything over there into the uh, war tent, and then I'll come back. All of the chests have now been cleaned up and organized, and I am so much happier now that it's done. I cannot stand living in a chest monster. And you can see here we have everything all sorted out nice and neat. Got all the important things over here. Wow, Bleaker and I have a lot of diamonds combined. Interesting. But yeah, this is uh, everything that we have and then just some random semi-important things. I put my two enchanted golden apples up here as well as my, uh, I don't even remember what this is called. Death compass is what I call it. Recovery compass up here. So now, I think it's time for the very first time this season to go visit the shopping district. I've heard that there's a couple shops up already. Uh, one of them is my good friend Iron, who lives right behind me, right over that hill. Uh, he's over there digging right now. He put up an iron shop yesterday, and I don't really need iron this second, but there's a game as part of his shop. So I wanna go try to do that. So I'm gonna head over there, and I'll bring you back once I'm at the shopping district. All right, we're over here at the shopping district which is this giant landmass, and I believe everything below it as well. Um, and it looks like people have started already claiming areas and building shops. We got a portal here. So anyways, while I walk over here, let's talk a little bit about the shopping district. So this season, um, the Zetas have decided to pay for plots. So you can see here, we got some uh, iron blocks. It's one iron block per uh, chunk, basically. And I believe this one right here is Iron's Shop. Get out of here, chicken. And here's the game. So basically the game is attempt if you dare, free stack of iron ingots with proof of legit bullseye advancement. Uh, basically you shoot at this block on that carpet. And if you hit it uh, 30 blocks away, you get the bullseye achievement. And I believe if you do that, you get a free stack of iron ingots. So I am going to try it. Skip. We'll stand a little bit further back as well. I have my own infinity bow. I guess I could have used his so I don't use my own durability, but first try. Ooh, slightly high. First try. Oh my God, I did it. It only took me one more shot. We all know that's not true. Look at how much durability I took down off this bow. <laughs> Though I did have to scoot back one block. Uh, I don't know if that means that you have to do it more than 30, but apparently this arrow right here is the one that counted. So anyways, I am going to get my free stack of iron ingots that uh, took me, that didn't take me 30 minutes to get taking one stack iron ingots, and I should probably buy a couple as well. Oh, I don't have diamonds. <laughs> well, I guess I'm just taking the free ones today. Sorry, bud. But anyways, it was fun, it was fun. I'm very competitive, so um, I had to stay here until I completed it. There was no other option. I knew that from the moment that I decided to play this game. So I'm currently in a creative world because I wanted to show you what I've been working on for the last few days. And I didn't really record any clips out in the regular survival world. So I put together a little setup so I can talk about these armor trims. So let's talk about them real quick. So there's 16 armor trims in the game. You can see them here. I'm not gonna read every single one of them, but I am gonna slowly make my way around so that you can read what they're called and where they're found. Uh, but I spent multiple days in the survival world gathering each and every one of these, and it took forever. Uh, and also talk a little bit about the smithing template, which I found out is how the only way that you can upgrade things to netherite now within the game. Um, but yeah, there's eight different trim possibilities. Uh, so you can see here we're using amethyst, diamond, redstone, emerald, lapis, uh, iron, gold, or quartz uh, in each of these. And there's 16 different options, so that's why I did two of each so that you could see them all. So anyways, let's get back to the survival world and we'll move on in the video. 
So I have picked a little location right here uh, next to the portal. I figure you might as well grab a nice location early for my first shop. And I have spent days and days and days, I'm not kidding, literal days, going and gathering every single armor trim in the game and making multiple copies of those armor trims. So uh, real quick, let's just do a quick statistics, items, times mined. You can see I have mined so many diamonds to get <laughs> the all the duplicates of these armor trims. Uh, so anyways, I've gathered all my materials. They're right here behind me, and we're gonna just hop right into a time lapse and build this shop up. Hope you enjoy. And as you can see, watch out diamond blocks. As you can see, the shop is completed. The shop is called Good Looks Armor Trims. And I spent so much time making every single one of these armor trims so that people would have a visualization of what they are buying before they buy it. So every single one is up here and created uh, with different trims and iron or diamond enchanted armor. So it took a long time to do this. There's a reason that the prices are pretty high on some of them. As you can see, the rarest one in the game, the silence is 64 diamonds for one trim. And then obviously you can copy it to the rest of your pieces of armor yourself. So yeah, I hope that the Zetas enjoy this and let me know, what do you think about the shop? Did you enjoy the build? Did you not? Uh, what's your favorite part about it? I. I really don't like orange, but honestly, I think the roof turned out pretty good. So let me know what your thoughts are. Well, we're back over here at the starter base because I figured the person that owns the armor trim shop probably should get trimmed up. So I just spent the last like two days in real life days uh, trying to find ancient debris in the nether. And it is a lot harder because of the floating islands. So it took me quite a long time to get enough to netherite all my gear. But I finally did it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to spend a little time, I'm going to netherite all my gear, I'm going to trim up the armor, and then I'll bring you right back. Look at that. I'm all netherited out, and I got purple trim. I did the silence trim. I may end up switching the purple. Um, I know it's like a huge waste of diamonds, but uh, it doesn't match my purple. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it looks awesome, but I don't like that it doesn't match my purple. So either I need to change my purple or need to trim with a different color. So I may end up trimming with diamonds. Who knows? I may end up switching patterns. That's the nice thing about having every single trim is all it takes is a little bit of diamond mining and I can switch it up whenever I want. I also uh, netherited every single thing, including the hoe and my fortune pickaxe. 
So every single item is now netherite, and obviously I'm probably not gonna wear my chest piece much, but it is nice to have it just in case I need it, and I wanted to have the achievement. So as you can see, if I scroll up here, we got both the achievement for netheriting the hoe, as well as getting a full suit of netherite armor. I think that's gonna do it for the first episode of Zetacraft Season 3. I know we did a lot, it took a long time, and I plan to release, uh, hopefully, at least an episode a month is my goal. So every single one will be packed full of a lot of different things, uh, but I think we're gonna call it here today. Uh, let's recap on everything that we did. So other than starting out, we built a mob farm, we built a starter base, we built a shop, we explored all around the world to get all of the netherite, or all of the trims. Plus we netherited all of our armor uh, and used the rarest trim in the game on our armor. So now we're silenced out and I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe to all those fun things and we'll catch you on the next episode of Zetacraft.